It's the Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. Early this month, a group of six countries cut diplomatic ties with Qatar. It stopped trade and even denied Qatari aircrafts and watercrafts from passing through their territories. The six countries are Saudi Arabia, Egypt, United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, Yemen, and the Maldives. They were then joined by Jordan and Mauritius, further isolating the small peninsula country. This move was made shortly after the visit of President Trump to Saudi Arabia, and the reason given was that Qatar allegedly supports terror organizations. Indeed, it is known that Qatar gives support to the Palestinian Hamas party, which President Trump listed in his speech in Saudi Arabia to leaders of Muslim countries. Let's listen. The true troll of ISIS, if you look at what's happening, Al-Qaeda, Hezbollah, Hamas, and so many others must be counted not only in the number of dead, it also must be counted in generations of vanished dreams. Now, we know Hamas is a Palestinian political party, and it is well known that it is an armed organization which was founded in 1980s to resist the Israeli occupation, combining guerrilla warfare with Islamic values. This is nothing new. Its name in Arabic is Harakat al Makawama Islamiya, meaning Movement of Islamic Resistance. Hamas is an opposition party in Palestine currently in control of the Gaza Strip and in a state of ongoing confrontation with the Israeli military. Recently, Hamas in the Gaza Strip has been under extreme economic pressure, both by the Israeli government and by the Palestinian government in Ramallah, which is causing a severe water and electricity shortages. Will Qatar's predicament have implications for Hamas as well? Now joining us to discuss this is Dr. Ahmad Al-Souz. He's a PhD from the Free University of Berlin. He is a scholar of the Hamas party and of Palestinian nationalism. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. al -Suz. Thank you so much for having me. Dr. al -Suz, just as soon as diplomatic siege against Qatar had been launched early this month, the foreign minister of Qatar issued an announcement that the Hamas representatives in Doha, the capital of Qatar, will be the ones promoting reconciliation agreement between Hamas and Fatah parties in Palestine. Is Qatar using Hamas to try to get out of this diplomatic bind they're in? Um. I'm not sure if uh, Qatar is using Hamas, but we can talk about mutual interest. And this mediation role that Qatar is playing, it started a long time ago. And um, like, for example, in, in Yemen, between the Houthis and the Yemeni government in 2008, in, uh, also in, um, in Lebanon in 2008, and in Darfur in 2011, and finally, a mediation role between uh, Fatah and Hamas. And this mediation role Qatar is trying to play in order to occupy or to open a political and diplomatic space. And this role can be played by many countries, especially tiny countries like uh, Qatar. But I can add that Qatar has always been an honest broker between Fatah and Hamas. Not like, for example, the Egyptian government, except the two years of the revolution, always sided on the uh, unbacking Fatah against Hamas. So I'm not sure that it is using Hamas, but it is an honest, let's say, neutral uh, arbiter. I understand that um, researchers at Tel Aviv University, which we should add is a right-wing Zionist institution close to the Israeli government, argues that Israeli interest uh, is to use the isolation of Qatar to weaken the status of Iran as well as Hamas, but without preventing Qatar from sending financial support to the Gaza Strip and from promoting mediation with Hamas. What will happen to Hamas without Qatar? Aid. Without Qatar aid, Hamas could be more weakened in, uh, in Gaza because Qatar almost is the only country that's supporting Gaza, not Hamas, because Hamas supported basically, especially the military wing by Iran. 
but Qatar supporting the infrastructure with, uh, with companies that are not related to Hamas. So Hama uh, Qatar is always playing within the rule of the games. Uh, and this has been uh, very obvious in, in the visit of uh, Prince Hamad Al Thani in 2012 to Gaza. All the agreements were done with independent companies, not with Hamas. And this is why I think the Israelis and the Americans led uh, Qatar to intervene in Gaza. Right. So what will this situation really mean? Will the crisis lead to a more likely reconciliation between Palestinian parties, Hamas and Fatah, or to a more aggressive resistance against Israeli occupation in a desperate attempt uh, on the part of Hamas to gain, gain more legitimacy? Uh, you mean the crisis, uh, the Gulf crisis against Qatar? Yes. Um, Yes, I mean, the objective of the, of the countries are sieging Qatar is to weaken Hamas and classify it as a terrorist group. And this, this could lead to the escalation of, uh, of the situation in Gaza between Hamas and Israel. But I think in this regard, Egypt rejected to include Hamas in the, uh, in the official document uh, issued by Saudi Arabia and United Arab Emirates to be classified as a terrorist group or a target of the blockade. And in this case, Hamas is not included officially in this crisis. Dr. al Suz, I understand that the head of Gaza, Sinwar, has just met with Mohammed Dalan from the Fatah party in Cairo. Now, Dalan is said to have good relations with the Egyptian government, but has been marginalized from the Fatah party by President Mahmoud Abbas during the last Fatah conference. Uh, what do you make of uh, this meeting and will it lead to anything constructive? Um, for, for Hamas uh, government in Gaza, it could lead to something constructive um, because the, the, the Halan is supported by the, uh, the Emirates, United Arab Emirates, and he uh, has a very good relation with Egypt. And if he can mediate between uh, Egypt and uh, Gaza, this can ease the blockade uh, to Gaza, especially through Rafah crossing and could uh, in the few days or a few weeks could Egypt uh, provide fuel for the electricity station in, uh, in Gaza? I think these uh, new relations between a bitter former enemy of Hamas into a new friend, this could ease the blockade on Gaza. Right. Now, last time we spoke, uh, we spoke about the document uh, that uh, the new policy document of Hamas, in which Hamas has distanced itself somewhat from Muslim Brotherhood. The Muslim Brotherhood is an international organization which was in many ways uh, financed and cultivated by Qatar, I understand. So is the new policy document of Hamas also a step away from Qatar, in a sense? Um... I, I don't think that the new document has to do with, uh, with Qatar um, um, because, um, the, because I think it has to do more with Egypt. I'm as an observer of Hamas discourse and I made a, I made a close reading for the document, it, it could make Hamas closer to Egypt, but it has nothing to do with Qatar because the Muslim Brotherhood, they nationalized their discourse in their... Uh, in their countries, and this is not against Qatar's policy. Right. Now, uh, this, of course, raises the question of the legitimacy of Hamas in the Gaza Strip. Um, what is their standing with the population of Gaza? I think the standing of Hamas, especially after in the last few weeks and the shortage of electricity and, uh, and water and other basic goods, of course, Hamas' popularity is weakened. But in this regard, I think the Palestinians are divided. One part is saying, oh, it's the responsibility of Hamas to provide people with the basic goods. And if it if it's cannot be able to do this, it can step away and bring Fatah, which has a better relations with Egypt and the international community. And there is another part of the Palestinians with the opinion that, uh, yes, Hamas is in control of Gaza, but Hamas is not the reason for the shortage of electricity. It is the blockade imposed by the Israeli, uh, the Israeli occupation. And Hamas still has a legitimacy in Gaza because when it came to Gaza, it came by, to office in Palestine and in Gaza, of course, it came by through democratic elections. And these, the, the countries that imposed the blockade on Gaza because they failed to defeat Hamas militarily in 2007, then they chose to, uh, 
to make economic blockade in order to compel the Palestinian to revolt against Hamas and uh, unseat it. And this is what's going on, I think. Right. And uh, what is the expectation of Palestinians uh, and, of course, people in Gaza in terms of their leadership? I mean, here we have a, a leadership crisis between Hamas and Fatah, and uh, this might really blow up over the next few uh, months if this kind of policy in the region involving Qatar uh, really gets underway and gets escalated. What is the expectation on the part of Palestinians in terms of um, Hamas and Fatah and potential reconciliation between them in order to manage this crisis? According to a survey published uh, this month by the Palestinian Survey Center in Ramallah, that 64% of the Palestinians are not happy of their leadership, basically Hamas and Fatah. But ironically, when they were asked that you want which party you would choose, then about 70% said Hamas or Fatah because they are established organization. I think the organizations, uh, the, the people, uh, disappointment came from no reconciliation agreement to solve their problems, but they don't have a problem, existential problem for Hamas or Fatah as parties, but as divided leadership, this is the problem. All right, Dr. al I thank you so much for joining us today and shedding some light on what is happening in the Gaza Strip as well as Palestine in relation to what's happening in Qatar. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you for joining us here on The Real News Network.